Let's conclude our analog test by talking about powered analog, what some people just call linear testing. In other words, if I have a op amp, I want to do some kind of linear test to make sure that the device is there and that it's a op amp, not a voltage comparator. I want to make sure that it works in the linear range, not just going all the way to the, making the output go all the way to the power supplies to make things sure things are soldered, but I want to make sure that a linear device really is linear. Op amp is a traditional example of such a circuit that you might want to do that on. So let's just take a look at this example. Here I have an input resistor of 2K, a feedback resistor of 4K, and an op amp that's powered to plus and minus 12. In almost every case this would only be half the chip. These usually come in 8-pin packages or 14-pin packages where you get two or maybe four op amps in one package. So I'm just showing this as an 8-pin device with pin 8 being power, pin 4 being uh, power return, not always ground, but in this case is using plus or minus 12. And then I've got two inputs and one output. So there's another one with pins 5, 6, and 7. But let's just look at this one op amp first. If I want to test this op amp, uh, I look up at the top right, here's my formula for the linear test. But before I do a linear test, it, let's do a sanity check first and make sure that all three of my pins are soldered. All three of my active pins are soldered and my power supplies are wired, my power supplies are up and working. So the first test I might do is I might put a negative one volt on pin one of the device, node 112 as I have it marked. Well you'll notice if I put negative one volt there, that makes the positive pin more positive. Remember the mantra? If the positive pin of an op amp is more positive, the output goes to the positive output. That's an easy way to remember, is my op amp output going to go high or low? So in this case, if you drive up a voltage straight into pin one, right into the inverting input, it will always go all the way to one power supply or the other. Okay, so the question is, if I put a negative one volt, what voltage will my output go to? And the answer is it's going to go to the positive, right? If the positive is more positive, it goes to the positive output. So I should read about 12 volts there. Op amps, by the way, usually don't go all the way to the rail. They'll go about a dollar drop away. So don't be surprised if it goes to 11.3 volts. So if I put a positive 1 volt here on pin 1, then that should drive my output to negative 12 volts, actually negative 11.3. So um, those are the kind of voltages I would, I would do just to make sure my op amp is there, my power supplies are working, the op amp does have the ability to drive all the way to the positive rail and all the way to the negative rail. But that doesn't tell me whether or not this is a voltage regulator or a voltage comparator. Unfortunately, the manufacturers put them in the same package. And so the only way to tell if this is really an op amp is to do a linear test. So I need to back up back here to pin 111, drive an analog voltage in. So remember, this is a two to one step up and it inverts. So if I put one volt in on, pin, on node 111, on the input of my resistor, it should amplify that two to one. So my one volt becomes two volt, but it inverts. So I should measure two volts, negative two volts on my output. If I put negative one volt, I'm going to measure positive two volts. Okay, you could use a higher voltage if you want. So I could put in, say, negative four volts and measure positive eight. So here's a question for you. What if I put in positive eight volts? What am I going to measure on my output? I hope you didn't say negative 16 because we're only powered to plus or minus 12. An op amp can't drive higher or lower than its power supplies. If you find one that can, then uh, you need to patent that circuit. Do you hear what I'm saying? So that was a trick question for you. So um, obviously it would limit it to plus or minus 12 volts. What would my test look like? I would drive four different tests, and here they are mentioned here, just the way I described them while we were discussing it. So the idea is then I will uh, drive four different inputs, two right into the input of the op amp, and one through my series resistor to verify that this device really is linear. So here's another idea. Let's drive pins one and two anywhere I want them to be, high, lows, and any combination, but let's just do it really fast. Now that's a good idea. Why is that a good idea? Because the only damage I can do to you two is heat related. So if I do that fast, say my test vectors can fire at say 10 megahertz, I can do this in four patterns. What's that? 
0.4 microseconds, right? 400 nanoseconds. I don't think I'm going to hurt anything to fire patterns of ones and zeros at the device if I only take 400 nanoseconds. And that's exactly how ICT works. So what you have to do, though, is let's measure that backdrive current for safety purposes, okay? And let's limit the time of our backdriving. Turns out that the manufacturers of the devices will usually say that if you backdrive for 200 milliseconds or less, it's safe. Other devices might be some smaller time, 10 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. You will have to look up that on the spec. But, uh, I mean, we could, even if it's 10 milliseconds, with the test running at, say, even as slow as 1 megahertz, that's an eternity. I can fire a lot of patterns, 10,000 patterns, even as slow as 1 megahertz. 